Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, a Pike County church goes up in flames. Good evening, I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. And I'm Gary Sloan. Members of Meat House Free Will Baptist Church are vowing to rebuild after a fire claimed their church this morning. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele went to the church where she found an unshaken faith even after plans for summer fun had suddenly been replaced by tears and determination. Residents in the Meat House community woke up today expecting to gear up for vacation Bible school. Instead, they woke up to find their church destroyed. The Kemper Volunteer Fire Department received a call at 8.45 this morning notifying them that the Meat House Free Will Baptist Church was on fire. When I arrived on the scene, a uh, fire was coming through the middle of the church and the roof. It started already starting to collapse whenever we showed up. And uh, we started spraying water in just a second. I sent two guys in, tried to cut the fire off from the back of the kitchen area here, try to cut it off. They was in there two or three minutes and the roof on the back here started collapsing, so I pulled them out. When Kimber Volunteer Fire Department arrived, the chief immediately called for assistance. I called Post and told him to get me Johns Creek up here ASAP. I needed it bad. Vacation Bible School Director Stacy Smith says this was a difficult sight to wake up to. It was a nightmare. I opened my back door and just saw flames shooting out the roof. And, you know, I moved here beside of the church because of the church. So, just to see it go down, it's heartbreaking. Smith says even though this is a difficult time, Meat House Free Will Baptist Church will still go on. We'll do something. We'll have church somewhere. You know, we will rebuild and God will see us through it. The cause of the fire still remains under investigation. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Still. Overnight, another fire, this one at the Myers Tower high-rise in Pikeville, caused little damage, but the building's sprinkler system is another story. Firefighters were called around 1.40 in the morning following a report of a fire on the ninth floor. By the time they arrived, the sprinklers had already extinguished the blaze, but difficulty in shutting off the system allowed water to continue to run flooding several floors. The entire building was evacuated during the event. There were no injuries. The incident remains under investigation. Independence Day is often associated with fireworks, parades, barbecues, and other celebrations. With all of the excitement going on for the 4th of July, it's important to remain safe. James Fields with Kentucky Commercial Vehicle Enforcement tells EKB News some of the major incidents that the Kentucky State Police observe on this day and how to prevent a major accident. What we see as a Kentucky State Police, we see a lot of speeding, a lot of distracted driving, and being this particular holiday, a lot of impaired driving. Uh, pretty much what we want to do, we want to try to stop the impaired driving, uh, kind of watch when you, when you text, get off the road, when you text the speed and watch your speed because enforcement will be out this weekend. With the fireworks going on, uh, especially on the main roads too, when you come up on these congested areas, you want to watch your speed slow down, uh, be careful because there'll be people crossing the road, might be cars pulling out of the front, be a lot of traffic, a lot of, a lot of traffic in the area, so watch your speed and just kind of kind of go slower than usual through these areas. Being the fireworks, they don't shoot them until they get dark, and then there'll be a lot of kids out, a lot of children out that's going to be crossing roads back and forth. Commercial vehicle enforcement encourages everyone to have a designated driver already in place before heading out to enjoy the 4th. A Boone County man arrested on drug charges in May has been indicted by a federal grand jury. Lionel Vivian Castellanos was arrested May 21st after police conducted a search of his home and found 51 grams of methamphetamine. This week, Castellanos was indicted on one count of conspiracy and five counts of distributing meth. The offenses are alleged to have taken place in Danville, Madison, and South Charleston. He continues to be held in the Southwestern Regional Jail. He'll be arraigned on the charges next week. Coming up, the 4th of July always means carnival time in Prestonsburg. This year's celebration will include music. All right, and a winner was crowned during last night's Road to Fame Finals. We'll tell you who sung her way to the top when we return.
Last night, a dozen singers took to the stage at the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg for the Road to Fame finals. Only one would emerge victorious, but all took home valuable lessons and new opportunities. EKB News' Courtney Lovren attended the concert and brings us this report. Thursday night, the Mountain Arts Center hosted the Country Music Highway Road to Fame competition finals. Original songs and covers, ballads, and upbeat tunes played throughout the night as 12 local singers took the stage in hopes of emerging victorious out of a pool of what was originally 63 singers. The winner was Whitley Tate from Cornetsville in Perry County, and she won a $1,500 check and a chance to record at the Mountain Arts Center. Fred James presided over the event and explained how this competition helps these singers. They have explained to me that they have learned more by participating in this competition because it brings out their very best. And so that's what the final product is, is giving them confidence to continue their, maybe their recording career or maybe a future in, uh, in singing. So that's what really is going on. So we invite everybody to participate. Last year's winner, Jason Goble, performed during the show, and later on, Kelsey May, who was a contestant on The Voice, came out to perform some of her original songs for the crowd while the judges deliberated. She spoke about her opinion on the competition and the singers that performed. I think that this is a tremendous, like, awesome thing to do for people because it gives them the experience to be on stage plus it gives them a huge platform around this area and it opens up a lot of doors plus they get to work with an amazing band that they probably wouldn't get to work with you know if they didn't do something like this so I just think all the way around it's great. I think that they all sound just awesome uh, I love I've, I know a lot of these songs that they're doing so I think it's great and they're doing a lot of originals as well which I think is really really cool that we have some songwriters here. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levern. There are many 4th of July festivities going on in the region. One of them this weekend is in Prestonsburg at Archer Park. Last night was the first night of a three-day carnival in the park. Casey's Rides is supplying the thrills. The carnival offers rides for kids and adults, as well as fried food, you might expect that, and games. And for the 4th, the festival goers will also be treated to a day of concerts. Well, this is the second year we've had Casey's Rides at the park. Uh, last year, it was, we really enjoyed having them in. I had a big crowd. Uh, we had concerts last year. This year, you know, we've got a few things on, you know, on the schedule again. Well, Saturday, we're having a, uh, three concerts, one from uh, 2 to 5, and one from 7 to 8, then 8 to midnight, three different groups. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we're going to draw and give away uh, bicycles to kids. So. Uh, when you come through the gate Saturday, save your ticket for the drawing at 9. Now, carnival goers will be able to see the Prestonsburg fireworks on Saturday night from Archer Park. The Pikeville Police and Fire Departments have joined together to establish an annual scholarship for local students. Each year, beginning with the 2015-16 school year, a $1,000 scholarship will be presented to a graduating Pikeville High School senior planning to attend the University of Pikeville. Pikeville Police Chief Philip Reed told us he hopes the scholarship will help alleviate some of the financial stress placed on students. I went through four years of college myself. I know the expense that's involved. Um, there's a lot of stress put on the student as far as book work. So why not uh, alleviate a little bit of that stress as far as, you know, you, you look at it and might think $1,000 is not a lot of money, but, you know, that, that might cover books for a semester. That might cover something that helps him just a little bit ease the stress to, to worry about coming up with money to, to buy something that they need. To apply for the scholarship, students may contact the admissions office at UPike by calling 606-218-5250 or emailing wewantyou at upike.edu. Coming up, a local football player is just hours away from announcing where he's going to play college football. Joe Kinzer will be here to give us a preview. But first, Matt Hawkins will be in to get us ready for the holiday weekend with his weather forecast. We'll be right back. You know, Lathan has been out all week. We've enjoyed having you here, yeah, Matt. I've enjoyed being here. Done a great job, but Thank now you. the big job you've got to do is make sure everybody can enjoy their fireworks tomorrow night. I will certainly try because, you know, I, I 
typically like fireworks. I like the ones that boom real loud and draw a picture in the sky. That's, yeah, that's, that's the too. best. best yeah. So far, are we hearing about any being postponed due to weather? At this point, there's not anything being postponed due to the weather, although it could be a factor. Uh, in the area right now, there's not uh, much going on in our eastern area, but uh, the flash flood watch that we've been under uh, it, that's actually was supposed to expire around 8 o'clock has been extended another 12 hours mm -hmm. to 8 a.m. tomorrow. So, a lot to watch. Yeah, there is a lot to watch. Right now in the area, nothing much going on towards the Pikeville, Prestonsburg, Paintsville area. However, if you look off to the northwest around Stanton and even further to the west of Lexington, there were flood warnings issued out in that area. But uh, we are going to get our rainfall coming from that area and also from the southwest, just kind of moving through the area. You'll probably see most of that occur uh, around at the 8 to 9 o'clock hours and maybe even later. So it would be a lot of rainfall. Notice how last night it was just kind of like a surprise to us and then all of a sudden it hit us. It may not hit us quite as hard, but we'll keep, uh, definitely keep a lookout for that. Now, temperatures at this hour, 73 in Pikeville, 75 in Prestonsburg, 76 in Paintsville, 75 in Sayersville, 74 West Liberty, Jackson at 75, and Hazard at 74. Off to the east, Logan 74 and Williamson 73. The cool spots again to the south, Dorton 71, and Wise checking in at 69 degrees. The observed high for today, 75 much lower than what's normal for this time of year, although a little above the low mark, with an observed low of 67 today. Record high set back in 2012 of 94 degrees. And then just three years before that, in 2009, the record low on the state, 56 degrees for that. Now, as we look toward the evening, 7 p.m., 73 will be the low. Showers and storms will come into the area and that will kind of translate more into rainfall off and on. Now, as we get into the sunset hour, this eight o'clock, nine o'clock hour, we might see more rainfall occur. Now, the fireworks that will be taking place in Williamson tonight uh, around uh, 10 o'clock in the Southside Mall, they may actually have a chance to have the rain just miss them. But now for Pikeville is an area like that, you may actually have to wait for it to go and then you might have a chance to actually uh, see the fireworks after the rain has passed. A slight chance of that. We'll see more of that rainfall increase and kind of go off and on with pop-up showers, bringing our cooler temperatures down to the 60s for overnight. Now, where are the storms uh, actually coming from? They're coming from, again, they've been coming from the northwest, but if we look off to this right here, there's nothing in the northwest right now. And so that means actually the rain is going to taper off as we get through the latter part of the weekend and into midweek. But now it's coming kind of in an easterly, northeasterly direction. That's a good thing. The fact that it's not moving east, but going northeast means it will move quicker through our area. As you can see, the past four hours, these strong cells over Lexington and over here in the southwestern part of the state are what's feeding the rain that will be hitting us in the next few hours. For tonight, though, however, 66, the flash flood watch continues. That is in effect until 8 a.m. tomorrow. Originally, it was for 8 p.m. tonight. The showers and storms will continue on into the night. Now, tomorrow, it's 84 degrees. This is something we haven't seen in quite a while. Mostly cloudy skies, keeping it warm. Scattered showers and storms continue. We may see a tapering off of that toward the afternoon, especially in the evening hours. Maybe only about a 30% chance for tomorrow evening. Faith Pharmacy, located in the Adams Plaza in Pikeville. Not much of a factor on the pollen count. 1.2. Our sky is going to be mostly filled with fireworks for tomorrow night. And 3.1 for Sunday and 3.5. The reason for that, of course, is the rain starts to taper off. We'll actually see more sunshine, partly sunny skies, and still the pollen not really a factor. Now, for the 4th of July, a 40% chance of showers during the day part. We may actually see that on the increase in some areas, but as the day goes along, we may actually see it decrease and may have time for the fireworks to actually be rain free or almost rain free. Overnight low tomorrow night, 66. For Sunday, the highs bumping into the mid 80s to the upper 80s almost in the first part of the week. Now the rain will taper off, that's why we're getting a little bit warmer. But in midweek, it's going to come back. Our lows kind of around the mid to upper 60s. So we've got uh, the brunt of the rain passing through tonight. 
in the first part of tomorrow, especially in the morning. And then uh, after uh, tomorrow night, not so much. The first part of the week should be a little bit better. Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed about fireworks, but we talked about things being canceled. We have this just in. Yes, Main Street uh, Live is canceled tonight uh, because of the weather concerns. That's downtown Pikeville at the right. Billy Johnson stage. Yeah, right. Always a fun thing, and they've, they've decided the it, weather, Mr. Weatherman, <laughs> is going to keep them away. It is a concern because there are pop-up showers that occur, and those are actually much harder to detect. But for the most part, we'll, we'll see rain on and off through the evening. Thanks, Dan. Right, in the second installment of a special two-part outdoor adventure, videographers Ronnie Hilton and Charles Mims return to visit with Floyd County bowyer Chris Riley. Tonight he's going to talk about the other side of his art, making arrows, and he'll also discuss how an artist can use self-doubt as an asset. Tonight, traditional bow maker Chris Riley shows us the other side of his work. Along with making traditional style longbows, Chris makes his own arrows out of all natural materials as well. Okay, arrows are kind of a different beast altogether. Uh, some things are similar to creating bows. Um, there's two schools of thought with arrows. There's what you call natural shaft and what you call split shaft. Uh, split shaft is when you get your arrow from a log the same way I do a bow. And the process is the same. It starts with splitting the log up and getting a board from that, splitting that board into blanks. Uh, for a natural shaft arrow, which would be something like bamboo or river cane or, um, or wild rosewood, which is actually here behind me, the process, once again, you have, to, you have to cure whatever piece you get, and that can take up six months to a year right off the bat. But with arrows, they don't need to be fully cured when you make them, um, because they're not going to be bending like a bow. So. On average, I'd say to make a set of six natural shaft arrows, I would say maybe about four to six months. Chris explains how he overcomes a struggle that every artist or craftsman may endure while working on their projects. A self-doubt, I feel like something is, it, it's something that probably every artist suffers from to some degree. And I think that self-doubt can be a useful tool uh, it can cause you to kind of look at your work with a critical eye to see if, you know, something might need changed or altered or if the piece may just need to be scrapped altogether. But uh, I think there's definitely a point where self-doubt can impede on your creative process. And uh, I think that every artist needs to be aware of where that line is and needs to be really careful not to let that happen. Oh! Self-taught and using only natural resources to create traditional bows and arrows, Chris Riley is the type of person that makes our region truly special. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Ronnie Hilton. This guy's got an impressive art going on <laughs> He there. does, very impressive. And we'll be right back with sports. Well, tomorrow's going to be a big day for Cash Daniel. Oh, it's a busy day for that young man. Thanks a lot, Gary and Cindy. Tomorrow is a day that is being patiently waited for by sports fanatics around the area. The six foot three, 230 pound Paintsville High School football standout Cash Daniel will announce his verbal commitment tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock at the Paintsville High School gym to select one of three schools. His choices are between Kentucky, Louisville and South Carolina. The word has been getting around about Daniel after he was rated four stars and is ranked the best eighth inside linebacker in America. Some people may think that he has made it clear that Kentucky will be his decision, but he's been noticed all around the country from teams and coaches such as Ohio State, Florida, Purdue, and USC. In his junior season, Cash had 111 solo tackles, 69 assisted tackles, four interceptions, and two return for touchdowns. The Reds will begin their series with the Brewers at Great American Ballpark this evening at 7:10. Mike Fires will be on the mound for Milwaukee, while Michael Lorenzen will be pitching for the Reds. The 33 and 48 Brewers will try to continue closing the gap between themselves and the fourth place Reds, who have a record of 36 and 41. But Cincinnati has taken the last three series with Milwaukee, including five of seven games this season. 
Some may not think it's a sport, but we think it's worth a mention. The annual world famous Nathan's International Hot Dog Eating Contest is tomorrow. On every 4th of July, thousands of people descend upon Coney Island to witness a well-known event around the world. Joey Chestnut, his nickname is Jaws, has been named the defending champion since 2007 and will be going for his ninth consecutive title. Chestnut holds the record for eating 69 hot dogs in only 10 minutes. And we got to wrap up sports with this story. Get this, folks. There's now an online dating site just for Kentucky fans called BBNMeetup.com. This free dating website is just for members of Big Blue Nation. The site has not fully been launched yet, but you can register on the website. According to the site's press release, this site is for people that find cheering for Kentucky sports an important part of their lives and consider it important for their potential life partner to share this interest. And let's not forget to mention the White Lightning Half Marathon 5K tomorrow morning, Cindy. Uh, it begins at 6 o'clock at the Pikeville Pike County Airport. How could we forget it? You're really? going to run in it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Through the creeks we go. Yeah, are you all ready? I mean, have you been training? Everything's good to go? As long as I don't drown going through a creek, I don't know how to swim. Oh, my. Okay. Nothing, I'll get the floaties on. Nothing more than ankle deep, okay? Maybe calves deep. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, guys, we've never closed out a newscast while holding food before. I know. Yeah. It's a first. Yeah. Are you the one responsible for this? Uh, I extended the show's budget tonight. Yes, I, I'm, the, I'm the guilty party. <laughs> hey, I'm in the American mood. I mean, hot yeah. dogs and, 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 you know, the Joey Chestnut going for nine in a row. I'm in the mood. See? There's nothing more American than the 4th of July exactly. and hot dogs. Exactly. Exactly. So you're going to recap things here. Yeah. Can I eat first or not? Um, no. It's hard to talk with your mouth. <laughs> we'll definitely eat these though. Okay, flash flood watch still in effect until tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock. As you can see, the storm progressing through, uh, to our area at a very slow rate. So for fireworks for Cold Run tonight, uh, it might be hit or miss. You might actually uh, get the fireworks out of the way before it comes in at the South Side Mall at Williams Williamson tonight. For uh, the extended forecast for tomorrow evening, Fireworks are a great possibility. Uh, grilling, not so much. So you might want to eat your hot dogs tonight, just like we are. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for the uh, rest of the weekend, the rain starts to taper off, especially get into the first part of the week and highs in the mid 80s for most of the week next week. Get, getting back into the warmer way, the way summer should be. Oh yeah, with hot dogs. Of course. Typical July <laughs> weather. Now there's a special full throttle tonight. Yes, they are with videos. That's coming up at 7 o'clock. And also we got fireworks in and around the area tonight and tomorrow. So mm -hmm. celebrate and eat your 4th of July hot dogs watching full throttle. Absolutely. Well, that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook. We're going to leave you tonight with a look at some of the bounty that's beginning to emerge from everybody's gardens. We'll also leave you eating our hot dogs. Good night. Have a happy and safe Independence Day, everybody.